next part of the sensory examination uh, involves a more thorough examination of the two main columns that go to the sensory cortex. These are the posterior column uh, and the spinothalamic tracts. The posterior column sensation, uh, the posterior columns transmit three sensations, fine touch, proprioception and vibration sense appreciation. The spinothalamic tracts conduct or transmit pain, temperature and crude touch. When we've done the gait examination and found either Romberg sign positive or negative, if it's positive, um, suggesting we're falling over, it does suggest a posterior column involvement, vibration, proprioception, and fine touch. That's really, for, sense, for a sense of clarity of how to do this, that's where you should go from there in terms of sensation. So you look at the gait, you talk to the patient, you take a history, examination, any predisposing factors such as diabetes, and then you go on and examine the posterior columns. To do so, you need to check proprioception and vibration. I usually recommend, as a screening tool, vibration sense first. So you get a tuning fork, and the tuning fork, uh, there are a number of tuning forks, as you're probably aware, but the one we use, or you're supposed to use, is a 128 hertz tuning fork. Now, students make a, a lot of mistakes as, as when they're learning, which is understandable, but they can circumvent these fairly easily with a bit of, uh, just a bit of concentration. So a lot of people tend to tap the tuning fork off their knee and then grimace in pain and it looks ridiculous. The other is smack it too hard and everyone can hear the vibration and it defeats the purpose of the test. What you need to do is be cool enough to just gently touch it to get the, the tuning fork vibrating. Now, thanks Peter as always. Sure. I'm going to, uh, you must uh, explain to the patient what you're doing. This, as you well know, is a tuning fork, Peter. I'm going to gently make it vibrate and I'm going to place it on your sternum here, okay? Can you feel it vibrating? Yes. Now, close your eyes. Tell me when it stops. It stops. Okay. So now at least the patient and the doctor know that they're, that they're uh, talking about the same thing. Now, I'm going to go down as far as your feet. And I'm going to make this vibrate. And I want you to tell me with your eyes closed whether it's vibrating or not. So gently, no drama. I usually place it on the big toe. Can you feel that vibrating? Yes. I do. Tell me when it stops. It stops. Perfect. If he couldn't feel it, I would then put it on the medial malleolus, or malleolus. If he still couldn't feel it, I'd go up to the patella. If he still couldn't feel it, I'd go up to the anterior superior iliac spine. And then at that stage, the next bony point, realistically, is the sternum. So you can then track, up, track where the deficit starts in the posterior columns with uh, vibration sense appreciation. Now, in a certain age group above 70 really, vibration sense is less uh, refined or finessed if you prefer, so you can give a bit of leeway on it. What you can't give too much leeway on though is uh, proprioception. Proprioception, as we've explained earlier from Romberg sign, is the uh, determination of where you are in space or where your body parts are in space, I guess. So what you should say to the patient then is, uh, I'm going to take hold of your big toe, and this is where you start, and I'm going to move it up and down. And then I'm going to ask you to look at it first, know exactly what I'm talking about, and then I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and tell me whether it's up and down, up or down, sorry. Now, you can't touch the toe all over the place like this because you're stimulating different, different sensory uh, parts. So you put with your left hand, you isolate the terminal phalanx of the big toe. With your right hand, you grab either side of it and you move the toe up and down, bending at the terminal phalanx here, uh, a joint, I mean. Um, now, I'm going to move it up and then down, okay? Could you close your eyes? Now, not too aggressive and not too dramatic. Can you tell me, Peter, where your toe is now? It's down. Okay, perfect. Where is it now? To refine it just a fraction, that's perfect. To refine it a fraction, you can say, which direction is the toe moving in? That might be a bit more difficult. So, in which direction is your toe moving now? Moving down. Perfect. So, it just this is uh, the detection of the muscle spindles and trying to find out where the toe is in space. If he doesn't detect anything at the, uh, at the toe, moving up and down, if proprioception appears to be disturbed, we move on to the ankle. So you isolate the foot at the ankle, holding the two malle malleoli between your uh, forefinger and thumb, and I'm going to take your foot and move it up and down. I try not to touch the rest of it, I isolate the foot. That's up and that's down. So obviously, Peter will be normal. So where is it now, Peter? Down. And close your eyes. And where is it now? Down. And as a really exaggerated example, you then move up to the knee, if he still isn't sure. Just bend your knee. And you can just hold the knee and say, that's down and that's up. Well, not so exaggerated, down and up. And then you say, is it up or down? So in uh, situations, the posterior columns are affected 
someone will have a positive Romberg sign, they'll have reduced uh, vibration sense appreciation of a 128, 128 hertz tuning fork and reduced proprioception. If we just stay with the two main modalities, you know that the posterior columns, as I said, run in the back uh, into the posterior, posterior uh, columns, which are the gracile and uh, cuneate columns, up to the uh, medulla synapse, cross over to the thalamus, to the post central gyrus, to the uh, primary somatosensory cortex, really. Conditions that preferentially affect the uh, posterior columns that you need to know about. Uh, the primary one is subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord, which is due to vitamin B12 deficiency. So, B12 deficiency can be due to dietary problems, gastric problems, etc. But it results in a predilection towards nervous uh, neurological uh, deficits in the posterior columns. So subacute combined degeneration of the cord, and the second one is tabes dorsalis, which is syphilis in essence, and the dorsal is obviously the dorsal or posterior columns. So subacute combined due to B12 deficiency, syphilis causing tabes dorsalis. Other conditions would be like Friedrich's ataxia, for example, spinal cerebellar ataxias, and paraneoplastic dorsal root ganglionopathies, which is quite the mouthful, but some people with cancer get autoantibodies, paraneoplastic antibodies that directly affect the posterior columns. Now, this uh, list is by no means end, uh, the, the, the main, it is the main one, but it's not uh, limited. Uh, so the, the main ones you need to know are posterior columns due to B12 deficiency, syphilis, paraneoplastic syndromes, Friedrichs, and possibly spinous cerebellar ataxia. I'm sure I'm missing many more, but these lists will come at times so long as your techniques are okay. The second part of the examination is the spinothalamic tracts or are the spinothalamic tracts, and as you can imagine, much like the corticospinal or the motor tracts coming from the cortex to the spine, spinothalamic are those going from the periphery into the spine to the thalamus, and the thalamus is the gatekeeper through which everything works at cortical, at brain level. Um, but for our purposes, people uh, that we're meeting every day come in and say, oh, I've got burning feet, painful feet, pins and needles in my feet, you're going to say, where do you start? You start with the posterior columns, for example, as I've just done, and then you move on to spinothalamic. The spinothalamic pathway involves pain, temperature, and also a certain degree of crude touch. Now, we always use pinprick and cotton wool, but in this, you can use either uh, soft touch or, uh, or pinprick. But again, for clarity, I'm going to stick with pinprick as the main um, stimulus to test the spinothalamic tracts. You should, one should have, uh, have handy, don't use any metal objects. Um, you should have toothpicks, usually are one of the best, or cocktail sticks. They should be sharp and used only once. Uh, so you should carry a small uh, collection, if you like, of those around with you. Um, just for ex expla explanatory terms, uh, we also test pain and temperature. And to do that, you fill a test tube with hot water and cold water. Test it on yourself first, and that's how you do it. But it's not frequently tested, to be honest. So I'm going to leave that to one side and stick to the spinothalamic tracts being tested using pinprick mainly, and maybe perhaps we'll use some cotton wool later. With these sensations, as you saw with vibration sense appreciation, uh, you start at the sternum. So I'm just going to expose you here a fraction, Peter, if you don't mind. Now, this is a sharp, relatively sharp. So I'm going to tell you that that's a sharp pinprick, as you know. And I'm going to say that's 10 out of 10. 0 out of 10 is no sensation. 10 out of 10 is that. Any variations between this sensation and where I press or place this uh, on the rest of your torso, if you like, uh, I'd like you to let, alert me to them, okay? So I'm going to start down here, and what we're testing for first is, can you feel anything at all? So if you could close your eyes, does that feel sharp? Yeah. And on to the other side, feel sharp? Yeah. And do they feel the same on both sides? Yeah. So we must compare, first of all, sensation is, peripheral sensation is normal uh, in terms of testing the spinothalamic tract. So once you do that, you know, okay, sensation is roughly intact, and that's the quick way to do it in the clinic. Now, if someone has a peripheral neuropathy, where the nerves start to, if you like, fray, they'll have burning hands and feet most usually. Hands, gloves, and feet, stockings. A glove and stocking pain or discomfort or burning sensation, the commonest cause of which by a million miles is diabetes. So a bedside test is to dipstick dip stick the urine and, and then uh, send off a fasting blood sugar, uh, or even just do a pinprick. But to test it, we do as we do here, we say, if perhaps it's not the same 10 out of 10 sensation of the sternum, you say it might slightly reduce. You gradually come up the foot and go beyond the stocking distribution, and it should change from a, um, oh, that's about a 6 or 7 out of 10, perhaps, and now, oh, and they'll notice quite quickly, it's, it's 10 out of 10 here. And you get the cutoff there for stocking, and then up the same up here, glove, sensory loss. So for peripheral neuropathy, 
you take a good history, the examination is quite facile actually, and it's more the knowledge around it gleaned from the history, family history of diabetes, history of chemotherapy, history of other drug uh, use, uh, or, uh, in, for, for example, uh, cardiac, some cardiac drugs can be neurotoxic. So the history is everything, the examination is important, uh, and then the investigations uh, towards, as I said, uh, the cause of the neuropathy, and they should include, after blood tests, a nerve conduction study. Uh, sometimes a sural nerve biopsy is performed, but that's pretty rare these days um, because we usually find, we, we often uh, can try and find the cause or else we abandon ship if the symptoms aren't too bad and treat symptomatically with neuropathic painkillers. So the spinothalamic tracts are, are pain and temperature, and pain and temperature stimulus here will come up here, it'll go in the uh, dorsal root again. Now, this time it'll either, ascend, it'll either synapse there or ascend one or two roots, it varies, and then it'll cross over and then run up in the spinothalamic tract through the medulla, not synapsing there, synapse again in the thalamus, and then go to the somatosensory cortex. So this is what's known as dissociated sensory loss. In other words, you can have the posterior columns afflicted and not the spinothalamic tracts, which are crossing over. Here, the posterior columns are not crossing over until the medullary area. So these are important things in, thing, in conditions such, for example, as a syringomyelia, uh, in which there's a cavity in the, in the cord and it expands forward to take out the spinothalamic tracts but spares the posterior columns, just as an example, and to put it in your mind's eye, how they can be dissociated.